Wow. Thank you so much, guys, for coming here. Uh, so thanks for this wonderful introduction. My name is Dasha Timbush. I'm a founder of the Custom Forum. Uh, and today with me, uh, we have Ida, uh, who is there. You, you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, sure. Ida and Aaron. Yeah, uh, yeah, my name is Ida. I'm a filmmaker. And uh, I am also creative director of uh, Cypherfunk Studio and working on an interactive film with NFTs integrated into it at the moment. Perfect. So we have like a, a little bit of the production side here and Aaron on the type of consultancy, right? Yeah, so I'm Aaron. Uh, I own AC Consultancy and currently helping to launch a film project called Slab Films, uh, which some of you may have come to an event of, which we had two nights ago. Yay! Go Slab! <laughs> So yeah, um, originally uh, we were like five people, uh, so we a little bit narrowed down till four, uh, till four and then three now. Um, we were thinking to uh, keep this conversation a little bit, you know, chill and casual. Uh, as soon as we are here, like two parts, one is kind of from the production perspective, you know, about the talents, uh, and another side about actually the web free and metaverse. Uh, so we were thinking to kind of divided a little bit about like how usually traditionally NFT can be used and what the alternatives can be used in uh, film and television. So Aaron, would you just kick it off and maybe uh, start like telling about your experience in film and television and web free and we kind of start from there? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, so, <clears throat> sorry, I lost my voice a bit over the couple of days. Um, so yeah, started in Web3 a couple of years ago um, in NFTs and a bit of crypto, just got super excited with that and started basically following down the rabbit hole that it is. But I'm getting more and more into it and started an alpha group and that's how I met James, who's the director of Slab Films. Uh, got speaking to him and he just had such an incredible vision with what he wanted to do with the project. It's like a five or ten year roadmap and he wants to, uh, he wanted to release a utility that had never been done before in films, uh, which is revenue sharing back to the holders and those who bought the NFT. And that just really excited me, the fact he was a, a visionary, he was great to work with, and he just wants to do good for the space. It's not about him making money. In fact, he's not even taking any money from the mint of the NFT. He just wants the project to, to do well, and he just, just really wants to bring new things to this space, and he's upset with the way that films are currently financed. He thinks that there's big problems with the ways that you know they tell you can only hire X actor, or suddenly they pull funding, and he believes that with NFTs, and, and I share this belief that we can get back to the good days of filmmaking, and people can start really enjoying the films again, and the creative direction is is with the director of the film. Um, so, uh, can you share like any numbers, like about uh, how actually how much? you were able, guys, to uh, attract? To raise, yeah. yeah. So we're currently, we're currently still raising the money. We haven't actually launched our NFT properly yet public. Uh, but we, like, you know, potentially, how much you think can be, uh, like, if, the, if we go this direction? Yeah, they want to raise about five million for the studio. Um, that'll enable them to do the first two films, or the first film, which will then unlock the second film, and a fully immersive film studio with VP and Unreal Engine technology. Uh, as we see like the crossover between film and interactive experiences becoming much closer and obviously gaming as well is, is huge. Um, so this will all be feeding money back into the community DAO. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, I know either that you are like being a filmmaker yourself uh, and what do you think about this way of fundraising, let's say? Was it like effective for you? Have you tried it? Or what are the ways you see it might work for you and your colleague? Uh, so far, we haven't been fundraising using NFTs, um, but uh, we wanted to make an interactive film and allow the audience to collect uh, an NFT, which is a character in the first film that we're making, that they can then import into the companion game. So that was the first problem we encountered, okay, how do we do that? And then I brought the second problem, is I want a mainstream audience for my film. I don't want just, <laughs> just the Web3 audience who knows about NFTs already. So that was the second problem we encountered. And in building the uh, infrastructure for allowing this, um, 
uh, integrating NFTs into games or interactive experiences and still release it as a, yeah, on a mainstream platform, uh, we realized, okay, this is, <laughs> this is something that a lot of people are going to find useful. So we started doing that parallel to the film production. But then uh, my creative brain started thinking, how else can we <laughs> utilize these NFTs? Um, and then there's everything, right? There's uh, NFT art. Well, I need art in my production design. You know, there are these really quirky characters out there. Maybe someone wants to make an animated film about one of them. You know, so there's, uh, yeah, so there's just so much uh, that you can do with NFTs in the production itself. I, I remember the other day we were discussing, like, potential of like licensing because you know uh, my perspective in this panel a little bit from the side of talents you know uh, I'm building the marketplace for actors where you can book uh, you know cast and crew globally and uh, when we were discussing with you you were mentioning licensing opportunities so maybe you, you elaborate on this a little bit well yes that's the that's the that's the thing if you if you are um, let's say an NFT artist and you've created this piece of art uh, and you want to make some money out of it, but you don't necessarily want to give it up, uh, which is, I think, maybe more important if you're, if you're an artist who makes music or something like that. So we thought, well, this is a win-win situation. I know filmmakers need music for their soundtracks, and I know artists want to get their stuff out, so how about we have a licensing uh, service where you allow... Um, NFT creators or owners to just make some money off of their IP and game developers and filmmakers get to license uh, really cool stuff and put it into their projects. Any numbers you can give? So like, <laughs> no, I we, we, we haven't started yet. We're, we're doing no, this No, I mean, potentially, you know, like how, how much you think I mean, might be how much the capacity I'm not, I'm not good at numbers. That's what he's for. <laughs> um, but um, no... <laughs> No, but actually, I, I've been thinking about this, and I think uh, NFT fashion is a big thing, and the technology isn't there yet, but in the next couple of years, we might be doing costume in post-production. If that happens, then you know, there, there's no limit. Like, I can see crossovers, uh, fashion, art, music, you know, even like character design, like anything that you could possibly mint into an NFT, you could technically can bring it into the film industry. I would love this. <laughs> Aaron, uh, any like examples you want to share like from your experience working you know, with film productions? Um, any um, ideas uh, you were exploring with your clients or maybe requests you were having? Oh, you don't need to mention like no, no, actually. No, it's okay. No, it's yeah. okay. Um, I think that obviously having the community involved from such an early stage is so nice. Um, so we don't necessarily agree with the idea of them, we were ta chatting earlier actually, about them you know, voting on what happens with the story because then they know the whole story before you release the film and that sort of kills half the magic. Um, but we were saying it's really nice how you can involve them in other ways, you know, bring people on set and experience the laughter, what goes on behind in you know, a way that's not done before. And they can also they can vote on, on certain things that maybe have like some impact but aren't completely changing the whole narrative of the story. Um, but yeah, it's just a, it's so, so interesting to get people involved in a different level to what I feel like it's been done before. Obviously, you have like crowdfunding and things like that, and they have, you know, you can come on set and do everything like that. But you're never able to sell your position. So I think that's something that with the NFTs that's so fantastic is, let's say, for example, with the project I'm working on, one of the NFTs gives you a line in the film. Uh, and if you won that, but you, you, know, you didn't want to be part of it, but you still wanted to be part of the community and experience the filmmaking industry, then you could sell that position and you know, buy back at floor and take back some of your money, which has never been possible before. And you can also now claim the royalties. So you know, if you'd have bought into Star Wars or Harry Potter early on and you'd invested some of your money, you know, imagine how you'd be doing now and just having that IP rights as, as that grows. So, yeah, that really excites me is the fact that the original investors and supporters of the film can, can, now, can now benefit from the success of the project. I want to flip it a little bit uh, to the side of, like, talents. Uh, because, you know, everything we just said, it's more like the production side, so people who making it and, you know, 
benefiting kind of from it. Uh, and the talents who usually involve just getting their salary for, for the job done. Uh, but how you think the talents who actually were part of this production process, uh, how they can benefit from utilizing NFT or just using it or I want to challenge you. I know some. No, no. I've, I've been thinking about this because, like I said, in this first film that we're doing in the series, um, the first NFT collection is of a character in a scene. Um, and this particular character happens to be uh, not fully human. So we can uh, just create, uh, you know, a 3D character of, uh, that doesn't resemble the actress necessarily. But... Uh, if we have a, like a famous actress uh, and she would be okay with her likeness being part of the NFT character, then obviously that's a good collaboration and obviously she will get a percentage of any NFT sales uh, or resales. Uh, so that's something we've been discussing as well. Your take? Yeah, 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 no, I, I couldn't agree more. I think like, so some of what we're going to be doing is airdropping clips of the film. Um, so for example, just like that, if it was a clip that in, so we've got Christopher Eccleston as one of the actors and let's say it was a clip of that or a meme, you know, he could then benefit from the after sales of that NFT or even just the sale of it in the first place. Um, so yeah, I think that's a nice way of getting them involved. But I know yourself have uh, some good ideas on this. Uh, yeah, I mean, but, you know, I just want to keep talking with you a little bit. Um, but, like, what about, like, other positions in the film? You mentioned, like, costume design a little bit. Like, we mentioned music. Um, how, how all these people can... I just want to fantasize a little bit. You know, I don't have exact answer, but, but we're still here, like, building something new nobody ever did before. Um, if, if we think about, like, cameramen, you know, sound people, people who were just... A, you know, executing somebody's will in a sense. Uh, do we think like <coughs> NFT can be used by them as well, or it's only by decision makers? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it can be used by them. Um, I mean, for, for us, if you're in the community and you are a cameraman or something, or you're applying for a job, or you know, you're a, a new actor or behind the scenes, we're gonna have places where you can go and there'll be lots of directors in there that are casting. So by being in that community, you can then you know, you reach more people, you make more contacts, and that can then give you more jobs. But I'm not sure necessarily how they could benefit straight back from it, apart from the fact that they could have royalties. You know, if you've been part of the film, that you could easily give all the crew and production team a percentage, and that would all go feedback to them forever. So that way you're going to have passive income for you know, the rest of your life whilst, whilst the film keeps going and the NFT project's around, um, which otherwise you know, they wouldn't be paid continuously for. You know, my, my take on this, um, you know, we build a marketplace for actors mostly. Um, and the next stage is obviously you can book like other uh, parts of the crew as well. Uh, so we are working worldwide in 124 countries. UK is our biggest market. Um, and constantly, you know, I've been thinking, uh, even though we have like all actors in the world in our platform, the problem is, not everybody will get the jobs. Not because our platform is bad or you know actors are not good enough. Everybody is amazing, talented, and unique. But the thing is, it's just not enough jobs in the market, right? So it's just not enough productions. Um, and we've been thinking uh, that actually by bringing the community, empower the community through the NFT, they can fundraise the money and actually create the movies together. So, for example, actors can get together, they find, you know, film and television people there, like cinematographers, you know, sound people on the platform, and actually create the teaser, you know, shot, you know, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, you know, thing, then all of them becoming, you know, owners of this piece, then they can actually put it on OpenSea or any other platform and fundraise this way. Uh, that's, that's how I think, this is probably the biggest problem uh, in, in our industry, just not enough productions. And we need to empower people to give them this opportunity to create these movies themselves. Not just, you know, like the money, uh, you know, holders uh, kind of doing this. And I think that's how we all different from the like, traditional business at, at what Web3 and Metaverse can give us. Well, that's the cool thing, because you're you're actually, you're, you're combining, you it's a two-way street. You're, com you're combining promotion 
and uh, fundraising in a way. If you're releasing a teaser or a concept uh, video, or a project that you want to do, uh, and that in itself is uh, you know, an NFT that can make money for the creators involved in that, but that will also potentially create some interest and buzz around like, I want to I wanna see a longer version of this. Is that, is that out? It's like, is there a script? Yeah, there is a script actually. We're, <laughs> we're fundraising now. And then you can have that two-way street. So I think that's definitely, definitely better than the system we have right now. Yeah, Dasha, do you want to tell us how you started your company and, and how? Oh, you know, just, you know, I've been to our manager myself and uh, I just found that it's not enough people like me for the talents in the industry. Basically for Formula and Actors, it's about 20,000 agents and managers. And even if all of us represent 1,000 people each, we still will be speaking about 3.8 million actors who nobody sees, just because they don't have representation. And I just was thinking it's unfair. Uh, and apparently we started the company to serve underrepresented actors, which doesn't mean this is untalented actors or just rookies. It can be very famous actors in Germany or England or Egypt. Uh, we have like Nelly Karim with us. She has like 7.5 million followers uh, following in Egypt. Like every single person knows her, but she's just not in the position for look for an agent. So she doesn't have agent in, in the US, uh, like CA or WME doesn't represent her. So Marvel sends her request through us and her manager in Egypt managing the request she's, she's getting. Uh, and that's how it's all started. But our involvement with NFT, it was just my constant thinking, like I want to help the people who can't get jobs because, because it's just not enough jobs. Uh, and I can't start producing all the jobs myself, but I can empower the users on our platform get the income, not by you know uh, being a waiter or you know doing the jobs that are not related to the film and, uh, and television, and still will be able to create the content, not the content, create the movies, uh, and um, benefit from this as well. And how does NFTs get involved with each and every one of them? Um, so we will be announcing an NFT in a you know, our probably last minute. Uh, I just, I just want to maybe share before that uh, an idea uh, we had. Um, originally, we was planning to do the collaboration between, you know, like Emmy-nominated writers uh, and the actors on our platform. Basically, writers they're already working on it. They're writing like one-minute monologues, uh, and we're giving this for the actors on our platform. Actors self-tape this, uh, and this is the piece of the content we can actually sell as an NFT, and all this package can also include, you know, autograph from this famous writer or this famous actor, um, you know, part of the script which was there, and uh, sell it over, and if at some point the script was acquired by the studio, so you actually become the co-producer, so you become the owner who you know, um, uh, who supported this piece like in the very, very early stage. And then it gives the power for fans, you know, to follow the creators and filmmakers they love, uh, to let them be who they are and, you know, encourage them to produce more for them. Uh, so that's, that's how it's all started. Um, do, do, do we want to share some final thoughts, maybe? I think we're... Yeah, Ida, do you want to talk about the IP rights and what it cites you with that? <laughs> Did you want to talk about the IP rights when we spoke earlier? Um, no, but I was, uh, I was, um, I was just uh, thinking about uh, just what you were saying. Um, get the, in the session before us, they were talking about you know, wanting a library in the metaverse. I'm just like envisioning this future now where people, like fans, can actually collect <laughs> like filmmakers and you can be like a super fan and just collect like the early drafts of films that go on to be like <laughs> super big and popular. It's like, yeah, yeah uh, I have the original like first page of this script. I've been, I've been sort of supporting this guy since he was like, yeah, just starting out. And I don't know, it's just kind of what we were talking about earlier with the, I know community building, everyone's sick of hearing that term now. But it's just like there's just something different about being like a 
like a movie geek, <laughs> just being like a super fan of something. And people have collected like memorabilia, and they've gone to like film festivals and conventions and. Um, yeah, uh, action dolls, whatever. Like this is the next step. I feel, and I feel like the. Yeah, do you want to talk more about like how yeah. the fan base can become part of the community? Yeah, I do. Well, actually, I just wanted to add on to what you were saying there. Actually, <laughs> I mean, I think the fact that you could like own a clip from one of your favorite movies is like really fucking cool, really cool. Um, you know, I've got so many movies out there that I just love, and to think that you like maybe owns a certain section of it, or like it was a meme, and like, let's say that then goes huge, you then have, you have something that grows in value as well as, as being a huge fan, which is probably, happens maybe with some sort of collectibles as they're, if they're rare and they drop in value, but this is a... I, I literally have a strip of like 35 millimeter from Titanic. <laughs> I wanted that for Christmas that that's year. So I was like, oh my God, there's an there's the actual film. That's the film, that's it, that's it. I was just so excited. Like, yeah, I think that, yeah. that can so, be so the next So many people thing. share that excitement. <laughs> and, I just, and yeah, even if it's a small film, it doesn't matter. It still enables you to be part of it in a way that's not been possible before. Um, yeah. Yeah. But like the coolest part about this, uh, because you know when when producers support movies, uh, they never know if the movie gonna fly or not, right? And sometimes the producer keep, you know, producing the movie with the same person, with the same director, just because they believe in in this vision. And at some point, this actually brings them benefits. It's the same, you know, like investors investing in startups, right? So they they do not know maybe like one percent of this in a very you know, fortunate uh, will kind of help them um, cover all their pro portfolio. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I believe you know these parts and pieces in the beginning can can go to something really really big. We've uh, we've only got a couple of minutes left. So did you want to share? Uh, yeah, uh, can you just give me the clicker? Um, yeah, so I was like sharing uh, in the beginning that we about to do our NFT drop. Uh, so this is like the whole point of this. Uh, to empower uh, empower actors uh, to become uh, visible, uh, to become financially free, uh, because um, NFT, as we know, a lot of people sometimes they pretend to be creators. They actually do not know anything about creating. Um, I'm I'm not speaking about like real creators and people who really. Uh, create authentic content which is unique uh, but uh, I was just thinking it wasn't fair that filmmakers and actors who have actually been in the industry you know for hundreds of years or more uh, they kind of now out of the game because they just not tech savvy people they like when you call like metaverse to them like what is it uh, or web free, and they're like, no, 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 no. Like, I'm, I'm just, let me do my self tapes. Uh, and we were thinking we can become, our platform, Custom Form, can become the platform where the actors um, having their first uh, digital asset. And uh, that's actually uh, what we wanted to show. I don't know, guys, is, is it here? Um, it doesn't look like. Uh, but anyways, uh, so uh, the first identity NFT uh, we about uh, to launch. Um, anyone can get it in our mobile app, uh, custom form. It's absolutely free. This is the first digital asset that will allow actor um, get their first step into the metaverse and web free. The idea here: the more successful you become in your career, uh, the uh, you know the more uh, expensive this asset become. And as a second step, uh, we would like to help actors start publishing their NFTs uh, by transferring their auditions into um, stills and a collection of the characters they're creating. So basically, the problem is actor constantly doing self-tapes, they never get paid for this. But if they, il we allow them to transfer the stills from their videos they're taping into the avatars, every single actor start creating, you know, the collection of the characters they can be, and this collection can be acquired by brands, by studios, but anyone, and you know, for some people making even you know ten dollars or fifty dollars, hundred dollars, it's it's a lot of money, and they can keep doing what they're doing. Uh, so I'm I'm happy I'm here, and you know, anyone can 
can try it on our platform custom form. That's brilliant. Well, look, congratulations and uh, good luck with everything. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being with us. We are out of time. So thank you so much and enjoy London. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.